What's up guys? So today is a little bit different video. Um, I've had a lot of dealers asking me about independent dealers or is it worth it to go independent or I want to be a tool truck guy but I'm a little bit worried about it. So what other way can I show you other than show you somebody that's experienced in it and he's successful? So today Matt Sledge Text Choice is going to talk to you about becoming an independent dealer or if you're a tool dealer, transition into that independent phase. So let's get after it. Come on. All right guys, so like I mentioned in the intro, um, I've had a lot of comments from different guys saying, hey, I wanna get in the tool truck game um, or they're a current dealer and they're considering going independent. And you know, obviously if you can get advice from somebody that's been there, done that and successful at it, like Matt Sledge is here with Tools or Text Choice, Text Choice. you would, you know, that's the guy you wanna ask a question and Matt's been kind enough to answer some of these questions and talk to you guys about it. So here he is, and I'm gonna let him run with it. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Matt Sledge, I live in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I've been a tool dealer for 20 years. I uh, started out in the tool business in 2001, being a uh, cornwheel tool dealer. I was a motorcycle salesman. District manager walked in and told me I needed to stop doing what I was doing and jump in the tool business. I didn't know what he was talking about. It was something automotive, and uh, I knew I always loved automotive, but I didn't want to be a mechanic. So I told the district manager, I said, well, I'm interested, but you know, I don't know if it's for me. So it took about three months to get in the tool business. Jumped into tool business, went and rode with a few guys, said, yeah, this is something I can do. So I got in the tool business September 4th of 2001. I worked for about seven or eight days, and September 11th, 2001 happened, the bombings, uh, they blew up the buildings in New York and the world was about to crumble. Uh, scared to death, came home as a grown man crying in my wife's lap saying I'm not going to be able to make it in the tool business. My wife told me to grow some balls and get out there and do it. And she said, you're going to jump off one of these diving boards and there's going to be concrete in the pool or there's going to be water and you're going to hit one of them. So I said, well, I'm not all about hitting the concrete, so we're going to make the best of it. So I took off on my journey as being the tool guy and uh, became a cornwheel dealer. Cornwell's a great company. I don't have anything bad to say about them. I was a good dealer with them for seven years. I learned a lot about their product. I attended many, many rallies, many, many district meetings, had a district manager. Uh, one thing about I can say about being a flag dealer is you are a employee of your own, but you're not really fully employed by yourself. So I was a dealer from 01 to 07. Uh, I was selling Cornwell tools. But then I found a company called Integrated Supply Network. Integrated Supply Network at that time started uh, coaching me to be independent. They said, you can make it, you can do this, you can do that. Well, my purchase averages started to decrease with Cornwell because I wasn't making as much money on my product. After listening to the independent distributor, I was gaining information from them, but also feeling pressure from the Cornwall district manager at that time that my purchase averages weren't what they were supposed to be. And he threatened me and he told me, hey man, you're $17,000 behind the national purchase average. Doesn't mean I wasn't doing business. I just wasn't doing business with them. So I uh, said, well, what do you want to do? He said, well, you got two options. He said, you can by $17,000, this is uh, Thanksgiving of 2007 on the uh, 24th of November. Uh, he said, you can buy $17,000 worth of Cornwell product or you can get out. And I said, wow, man, it's cut and dry like that, right? And uh, he said, yeah. So uh, I said, well, I'm not gonna buy $17,000 worth of product. I think I'm gonna move on. I said, I'm gonna be an independent. And then the district manager took his glasses off like this. He said, well, good luck. He said, independents don't make it. You'll run out of business in a year and you're making a mistake. You should buy $17,000 worth of Cornwell. So I was nervous. I uh, had Sun X on my truck. I had a lot of S&K on my truck at that time. Uh, every time somebody would come in the truck and they would look at a set of Cornwell wobbles from 10 to 19, it was $280. And the customer would cringe and they would get ready to walk off the truck. 
and I would say, wait, 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 hold on a second. I got a set right here from SunX that I can sell you for 149. Well, then the customer would automatically turn around, come back in my truck and, and go ahead and complete the purchase. So a lot about going independent in 2008, I had to kind of go come to grips with myself because I'm, I'm cheap and uh, I believe in what I sell and I didn't believe in what I sold in the Cornwell line. So the Cornwell stuff was $280. And I knew in my heart that I would never pay that kind of money because I don't do this for a living, but I thought that was really expensive, but I could see myself paying $149. So a lot of that went into the equation of going to be an independent distributor. And in 2008, I decided to pull the trigger and take off and rattled my head, scratched my brain. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna call it? I wanted a professional name, did a little research and uh, came up with the name Tex Choice as in technician's choice. I like to call it tools the techs choose. If I was a car salesman, that's probably what I would say. But uh, so I came up with Tech's choice, talked to a company in California. They produced a few logos. It was a shit show, man, I gotta be honest. I came up with a wrench and a screwdriver and a claw hammer. I never even really even thought about the claw hammer until the decals actually went onto my truck. Decals went on my truck, people started making fun of it. I didn't care, I was in the business. I was gonna make it, just like my wife telling me to hit concrete or hit water. I was gonna bound and determined to make it. So how did I go independent? I took everything that I had on the truck that was Cornwell, and at that time I was driving a Freightliner with a front shelf up here. I took every tool that I had and I stuck everything on the front counter and I said, guys, I'm selling all this Cornwell stuff at cost. Why? At cost. I wanted to get my money out of it as fast as I could because as expensive as the Cornwall stuff was, the Sun X and the Gray Pneumatic and the Giga Wrench was like half the price. So I stuck all the stuff on the front counter, got the cash out of it, turned right around, actually doubled my inventory, seeing the same customers. I left in 07 as a Cornwall dealer. I showed up in 08 as an independent dealer. I got the same customers on my route. I was selling the same product anyway took the decals off the truck. My truck actually rode around naked for about three weeks until my decals came in. I went independent in 2008 and the rest is history. It's actually all far behind me. So I ran as an independent, as a no name brand, like a text choice brand. I retained the same customers. Business just continued to grow because my prices were good. My service was good. Nothing changed. I was still just the same guy. Go fast forward to about 2013. I started getting really, really, really busy. Well, 2013, my nephew, which is 26 now, was young. He was like 16 years old. He was just fresh, like a, still a freshman or a, no, he was a senior in high school. Very, very smart kid. And um, he wanted to come work for me. And I said, well, man, I don't really have a job for you to do. I've never hired anybody. I don't know how this will work. So he came on in 2013, became an assistant and we became a two-man team. And uh, we ran, that, ran like that for a long time, for 2013, and then in 2016, I decided to bring, on a, uh, to bring on an additional truck. So one of the mechanics out of my uh, area, Stephen Caswell, he decided to, that he wanted to work for me, so he came on as a trainee, and uh, we trained and went through everything and then moved on to that. If you fast forward to 2021, I got uh, three trucks now. I try to train my guys to run their route exactly the way I do. Treat the customer first. Always warranty the products that you sell. Give the customers a good price. Show up on time. Do exact same job, the exact same job that your guys are probably doing right now. So if you're someone that's contemplating whether you can make it as an independent or your name's gonna be strong enough or if you're gonna have the product availability that's offered as an independent, take it from me. Don't worry about it. You're gonna be fine. Uh, I carry on my truck, and I guess you may have seen it in some previous videos, I carry on my truck a lot of inventory. Inventory's king in being an independent dealer because when you pull up to a shop, people see a no-name no -name decal on the side of your truck, they begin to think the worst, you know? If you, uh, if you load your truck full of uh, all kind of variety, and a lot of different shop, uh, different buying experiences, the guys are gonna do business with you. So um, anyway, I do about 22 to $23,000 a week. 
and that's just tools, guys. I don't sell toolboxes. All the stuff that when I was a cornwheel dealer, all that stuff is gone. All the financing is gone. Everything that I finance to a customer now all comes out of my back pocket. And I know to some of you may say that, well, I can't afford that right now. If you make more money on the tools that you sell than you do the toolboxes. A problem with the toolboxes back in the day when I worked for Cornwell was I would buy a $3,000 box and I'd sell it for $4,200. So I'd make $1,200 when I sold the paperwork to somebody. But when I sold the paperwork to Cornwell, and you guys know what I'm talking about, Cornwell takes 10% of that right off the, right off the rip. So a $400 check comes out of that for Cornwell in order to buy the paperwork at that time. And then it was my responsibility to go around and collect the payments from the customer, which they were paying with a credit card. So them paying with a credit card, I'm paying at least two, two and a half percent interest picking up their money. So at the end of the day, when you think about selling a toolbox and your numbers look good and you say, I've sold, I sold 20 grand this week and you sold three toolboxes, did you really make any money? You know? So that's the questions I had to ask myself. Do I want to continue to sell toolboxes? Or do I just want to sell tools? I walk into every shop that anybody buys a brand new toolbox. I don't care if it's Cornwell, Mac, Maco, Snap-on, whatever. I pat them jokers on the back. I tell them, man, your box is gorgeous. That's the best looking box you've ever, you know, you could have ever bought. I really, really love it. Even if it's purple, I still tell them that I love it. But I'm their tool guy. So I want them to come to my truck and I want them to buy their toolbox from the Snap-on or the Maco guy. And I want them to fill it up with my product. And when you're an independent dealer, you can sell them twice the amount of inventory that they could buy from someone else. So the tools still do the same job. They still got the same warranty. All the companies that I deal with, like Integrated Supply Network and Medco, they don't ask me any questions. Actually, a lot of times when I turn my warranty in, I'm very, very, very surprised of the stuff that they actually give me credit on. So Integrated Supply Network, Medco, they both enjoy having you as a dealer. And if you buy enough from them, they're gonna take care of you. So if you've got any reservations of whether you're gonna make it or whether you're not gonna make it, I guess it all boils down to how much you believe in yourself. If you think that you got this and you can do it and you don't need the financing from Cornwell or Matco, go independent. There's so many, so many more freedoms that you have by being an independent dealer. I know it's Snap-on and I think Mac, they give you a territory that's like headcount 250 customers. All that blows out the window when you're an independent dealer. I actually have a route in Franklin, Tennessee, and there are several shops that I go to. One prime example, I went to BMW. And I went to BMW and the guys offended me so bad there, I just left and I never went back. You know what I did? I went across the street to the Lexus dealership and the uh, Acura dealership and picked up all kind of customers. So if you go to a place that you don't like, within reason, you don't have to go there. There are no restrictions. When you're independent, you are truly 100% independent. But if you need somebody to call you every day and tell you to get out of the bed to go to work, I wouldn't be an independent dealer. If you get up, you're a self-starter and you're self-motivated and you got your own self goals, take off and do it for yourself. There's a lot of options out there. There's a lot of different ways people, uh, a lot of different companies that are willing to help you. And there's financing programs and I've owed integrated supply network as much as $80,000 before. I pay them every month. They'll give you credit just like the other dealers were. When I was a Cornwell dealer, they made me pay my bill off in like 17 days. So, no problem. But always live beyond less than what you, you know, always spend less than what you make in order to be comfortable. So, would I ever change it? No. Would I ever change to go to someone else? No. I got 10 years left being an independent distributor and uh, then I'll hang my hat up at around 55 or 57. Let me mention one thing, something just came to mind. As being an independent dealer, I've got a case where a customer saw me being successful since 2008. So I think it was four to five years ago, a guy named Buster out of Ohio saw my success on Facebook and decided he wanted to be an independent tool distributor. He reached out to me, we talked. I actually had a truck for sale, as I do right now, wink, wink but I actually had a truck for sale at the time. He wanted to know what it was gonna take to set him up in the tool business. I said, well, man, I I can't really explain the tool business to you on a phone call. Only thing I could explain is maybe you come down from Ohio, get a hotel, ride with me for four or five days, we'll talk about the business side of it, and I'll sell you my truck. So when I sold him my truck, 
he said, what would you take to buy your name or be a dealer with you? So I kind of got to thinking, you know, I'm an independent dealer. I work for myself. It's just my business. I've never really thought about anything big picture like this. So I came up with the price of $5,000, uh, showed him everything from pocket screwdrivers to letterhead to notepads to t-shirts to hats to pens pencils business cards i mean everything i've already spent all the money on the 700 dollars in the design of the logo and the research and i spent a lot of money developing that stuff so i thought five thousand dollars was pretty cheap he counted out five thousand dollars he handed it to me and he's still a dealer today in ohio running under the name text choice ohio so don't get them confused you got Text Choice Tools and Equipment, which is me, but you got Text Choice Ohio, which is Buster. We still run together. We're in different states, but I could grow the name a lot, but I don't know how interested I am in actually doing multiple franchises or having someone come and work for me. I mean, I've got three trucks now. Uh, it's a lot of time, guys. It's been, it takes a lot, and uh, I got to wrap my head around it if I want to try to expand like that. Uh, I've got a real successful, extremely successful tool dealer in Florida named Paul DePaz that runs USA Tools. You, you guys have heard of him if you live in Florida. And uh, he gave me some good advice a long time ago. He said, stay small, stay three trucks, stick with three trucks, don't go big. He created a monster now that he can't really, he can't really tame. He works Saturdays, he works Sundays. I'm trying to have a life in the tool business. I'm trying to work and live a little bit. So. But if you got any questions and you think you want to be an independent distributor, shoot me an email and uh, or give me a call. I may not answer, but the email is great. The name of the business is Text Choice, so the email is textchoice at gmail.com. So that's T E C H S and the word choice, C H O I C E, the choice of the professional technician. So. If you guys got any questions, reach out to me, send me an email. I may not respond immediately, but I might respond when I get back home after being on my route. I still run a full four days, man. I'm just like you. I'll go out every day, hustle till 5.30, 6 o'clock, get home, unpack inventory, stick it on my truck. I try to keep a clean truck. It's a lot of work, and there's a lot of work to answer phone calls too. But send me an email. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Well, one of the things I've said many times, and I think a lot of guys feel the exact same way I do, when you purchase a tool, no matter what name it is, the stamped on it, if you use it, eventually it's going to wear out or break. Yeah. That's just how it is. Yeah. And the tools are only as good as the guy that sells them to you. You're like not it, buying the brand, you're buying the man. Exactly That's what they say right. all the time. You know, in, in some of the best tools in the world, you could turn down for warranty if you wanted to. You know, but the good dealers always take care of the customers. And right. I think that's what makes... If you're a good dealer, mm -hmm. no matter what dealer name's on the side of your truck, you can make it as an independent guy. I fully believe that with all the different choices that's out today. But now if you're a crappy dealer, yeah, you need Snap-On's name to help you, you sell your product. You do. You need Matco to help you sell your product. Like with me personally, I've got some of the best tool dealers, I believe, in in, in the country. Like I would put my tool I'm guys. I'm not your tool guy. <laughs> I would put my tool guys <laughs> up against anybody because yeah. one, when you have multiple guys running against each other, yeah. you have to be good. Right. Because this dog eat dog world. Right. And if you're a puppy, you're not gonna last long. Right. And that's why I have such good tool guys. But any one of them could pull the name off the side of their truck and put whatever name on it. I did it. And do just like you did, become a successful independent tool guy. So I honestly believe if these guys that are good to start with will mm -hmm. have no problems making it because just looking at your inventory, man, the only thing you're missing is a toolbox. Like you yeah. can get everything. I mean, I got a toolbox here, but it's, it's a cheap deal and not a, you know, not, it's something for the entry level mechanic that's wanting to come in to get in the business, but it's something that I can afford too to sell to right. somebody. I don't want to get into selling people $10,000 toolboxes. One, I don't believe in them. What I said earlier, you gotta believe in what you sell. And if you don't believe in what you sell, you can't hold your head up high and, and uh, sleep well at night. But um, you're buying 100% your tool guy. If you have a great tool guy, that guy can go independent, no problem. Gear Inch came out with a program called the Gear Inch Street Team. Mm -hmm. And if you're nervous about, I don't know what my brand will look like, I don't know if I can make it, I don't know if anybody's gonna recognize you know, 
J and M tools or right. you know Junior's tools or something like that. You do have to be a little creative, guys. And it's worth spending the money on the correct logo to put on the side of your truck. Am I a thousand percent happy about the logo that's on mine? No, I'm a thousand percent very happy about the name. But uh, do your research on, on, on doing a brand and build something that you can sell. So when I came up with Text Choice, I didn't want to call it a... I came up with a funny name a while back because my last name is Sledge. And uh, whenever I was going independent, I thought, well, I'm going to come up with uh, Sledge Hammer Tools. And a big hammer would be on the side of the truck, and it's called Pound in the Competition. And it would have like Cornwell and Matco and right. everything else shooting out of it. But then talking to some other business people, they said, don't put your name on the side of the truck. Put something on the side of the truck that you can sell, look like it's a professional uh, tool route and uh, a recognizable name. But if you're a strong guy and you enjoy work and you enjoy what you do, but you're having too much pressure from your district manager and uh, they're pushing too much product on it, or maybe they're even shipping stuff to your house. This is what used to happen to me. I would be on my normal day schedule and get home and there might be 15 packs of pry bars show up in my house. And then my district manager, when I went inside, would send me an email that said, hey, these pry bars were on sale, so I sent 15 of them to your house. Well, I didn't order those. Oh, that would suck. I didn't order those. So I might already have three on the floor. Now I've got 18 pry bars that I have to push. And I do work well under pressure, and that's okay. And I get it from his standpoint. But when you're an independent, that's not going to happen. And you don't have to go to district meetings. You don't have to go, oh, check this out, Clay. When I was a Cornwall dealer, we would go to tool shows. And I don't know if any of you guys experienced this, Macco, Mac, Snap-on. I would go to a tool show as a Cornwell dealer, and the show would cost me seventeen to $1,800 to go to the show. So I always bitched about it. And I said, you guys are going to charge me 1700 to go to your tool show, and I'm one of your tool dealers. Meanwhile, Integrated Supply Network, ISN, was on the other side, and they would say, hey, man, we'll invite you to our tool show. Uh, we're going to fly you down there. We're going to put you up in a hotel. We're going to give you all kind of this free product. We're going to treat you to dinner. You could win a Corvette, a car, a Mustang, a four-wheeler, a boat. You could do all this type of stuff, and then we're going to fly you home. Well, wow. scratching my head, that made a lot of sense. i got to say this. I've been to a lot of tool shows. Never won anything big other than a TV and a drone. <laughs> so my time's coming. But uh, if you are a dealer and you, that happens to you, I couldn't sweat that. Well, my district manager would tell me, well, it costs you $700 to go to the tool show, but what you're supposed to do is buy enough product that you're going to make enough money on it to cover the tool show. I'm like, well, then why did I fly? Why did I fly here? Why did I stay in a hotel? Why did I do all this? So the tool shows for the flag dealers, very expensive. When you're an independent dealer, I went to a tool, tool show probably seven or eight years ago. I hit some really big numbers when I added on the second truck. Uh, my numbers were growing. They were getting bigger. ISN decided they were really going to take care of me. They flew me to the airport. They literally called me and said, hey, man, you're going to have a limo waiting for you at the pickup aisle. And sure enough, we land the plane. We come down the elevator. A guy's standing on the side in like a full suit that says the sledges. My wife and I and her kids, we go, we get into the car, we go to the tool show, we go up to our room, gift box. I mean, guys, the benefits wow. are pretty good. They're not bad at all. ISN will take care of you. Medco will take care of you. Just put some trust in them. Have a good sales guy. Uh, have a guy that's actually going to show you some product. I do. And uh, eat, shit, sleep, and breathe the tool business. And you'll make it. The successful ones do. So what would you say was one of your biggest challenges when you walked away from Cornwell going out on your own? The biggest challenge is probably selling yourself. Selling yourself is probably the hardest thing that you can do to talk people in to actually come into your truck. Uh, some of the challenges that I just recently incurred, and I've been in the business for 20 years, was an example of that BMW dealership. I went to the BMW dealership, I talked to the guys, told them what I had, what I had to offer, I told them I was a tool truck, and some of the guys asked me if I even had a tool truck and if I, if I sold tools out of a van. 
And, uh, you know, so a little bit of that is, uh, is, is a little bit of a hurdle to get over. So selling yourself is the biggest thing, but the way to combat that is, is have a truck with a lot of inventory on it. And once you get one, you'll get the rest of them. So if you get one guy out on the truck, your customers are your best advertisement. Okay. So what's been the best for me is treat everybody fairly, even if you don't like them. Treat everybody fairly because that person is your advertisement. When a new guy comes into the shop, all the guys that work there automatically tell the new guy who to do business with. That's so exactly if you right. take care of every single guy that's in the shop and don't just go see the guy that owes you money, very important. I go see the guy that owes me the most money when I walk into a shop last. The first person I go see when I walk in the shop is a guy that doesn't owe me money. One, because I know we don't have any business together. One, I just want to go by and say hi. And then I go to the other guys that owe me money. But the guy that doesn't owe me money, if you say hi to him every single week and you talk to him, just a simple hello, even a attaboy or a pat on the shoulder, and then go see the guys that you have business with, you're planting a seed. You're planting a seed. You're planting a seed where the other tool guys may not be doing that at the same time. So selling yourself, keeping a professional image, I know I got gel in my hair and it's kind of people give me crap about it all the time. It's the same look I've had forever, but I don't go to work all scraggly. I actually send my clothes to a dry cleaner. I walk in professional because when you're an independent dealer, you have to let them know that you're serious about your job. You mean business. You try to keep a professional image. You go in, you tell them, you know, you have to sell yourself the most. And then once you get them on the truck, it's over, brother. They're going to come buy tools from you. So once you get them on the truck, you portray a professional image and you give them a good deal and you treat them with respect and you actually talk to everybody. That's the secret to success. Showing up on time and doing your job, that, that's, you know, that's the biggest thing in the tool business. This tool business is not rocket science. Anybody can figure this out if you're just willing to go to work. There you go. Well, that is 100% true. It's, it's I mean, the truth, man. Well, Matt, I appreciate you spending the time yeah, today. Um, like I say, I've had at least five or ten different guys asking me about, you know, everything that you've covered today. Curious about going independent, you know, um, or even getting into the tool business as an independent guy. And, you know, you given this knowledge is, is very appreciative, and, and these guys are going to thank you later for it, I'm sure. But hopefully this will help some guys out, and I definitely appreciate you taking yeah, the time to do it. No problem. Like always, guys, text choice tools that text choose <laughs> at gmail.com if you need to send Matt an email yeah. asking some questions or you want to join the text choice team. There you go. Five grand. <laughs> he can walk you through the whole thing and even got a tool truck loaded with tools that he can put you in today. Put you in today. Be text choice worldwide. I mean, you know, I don't know how that, that would be a. I'm from Tennessee, by the way, so that's pretty southern accent, but I'm not dumb. <laughs> I don't there even own a tractor. <laughs> well, thanks, man. Like always, guys, hit that thumbs up. It don't cost you nothing to hit the thumbs up. It costs you to buy tools. No price for thumbs up. Click over here for merchandise, cool tools, and discount codes around here. If you're not subscribed, that's free, too. You just press that button right here. Just click it. That's all you got to do. You guys have a great week. Get out to Matt if you want to be a tool dealer. You guys take care. See ya.